For the back side, let's take a look at number 20. You're given a function n, which is saying n number of cars produced after t hours. And they give you a cost function, which is a function of n. And so what you need to do is use composition of functions. And here in this variable, you put the other function. So this is just an application of the composition of functions, which we have done multiple with just, you know, functions themselves, but without any storyline with them. And so this one has a storyline. And then after you find that composed function, they want you to use your formula to compute the cost and use four hours. So that's telling you after t hours, so you just substitute the four in to that composed function. When you look down here at 21 through 25, you're solving exponential equations. Remember, our first and go-to, love to do it, move is equating the bases so that we can then pull the coefficients off. So you look at the bases and say, this base of 3, I can make this 9 a base of 3, which is 3 squared. Then you have to, of course, use some uh, exponent rules and get 3 to the something on the left equals 3 to the something on the right, then set those, coef those exponents equal to each other. When you look at 22, this guy, the one with the variable in the exponent, has a base of 5. Can you write 125 as 5 to the something? Yes, you can. So you're doing the same move that you're doing with 21. 23, same thing. Remember, when you're looking at this, it's a fraction, but that's okay. How do you move something into the numerator? If you have 1 over 3, that's really like 3 to the negative 1. And you can move it up and down within that fraction. And so when you do that, then what happens, you get in the parentheses 3 to the negative 1. Don't forget to multiply that negative by that x. Rewrite the other side. And woohoo, like bases, equate the, co the exponents then. This next guy is a hard one. That kind of problem would be more like a bonus question on the exam. You have to take the logarithm of both sides because there's no way you can equate the bases and then pull those exponents off. And so you take the log of both sides, then you have to bring the exponent down using a power rule and then expand and move from there. Uh, come see me tomorrow morning during office hours if you'd like to see that. When you go to the last one, we can equate the exponents on this one because 9 can be written as a power of 3. And then don't forget to use your exponent rules and then pull those exponents off. Moving down to 26, 7, and 8, we have these two formulas. Remember, this is for compounding continuously, and this one is for compounding a certain number of times in any given year. P for both of them is principal, R both of them is the rate, and that's written as a decimal. T is in years, and then you'll notice what's different, we'll say over here on the right first, that E, that is a number, the number E from your calculator, 2.71 and on with decimal places. But on the left, we get this N, and the N is the number of compoundings in any given year. If you compound monthly, you use 12. If you compound daily, you use 365. Quarterly, you use 4, and so forth and so on. And so when you take a look at a problem like this, and they want to know how much money you will have if interest is compounded two different ways, how much money you will have is this A. And so you have to decide which of these two formulas you're going to use. You kind of compound monthly, and you use this guy and you pull each of these pieces of information off continuously, you use this formula. So for each of them, 5,000 is the P, 0.05 is the R, the T is 10, and that's all the information you need to substitute in over here to be able to calculate the A. And then on this, that's the continuously for monthly, you're going to use N is 12 and all those other values, and on you go. 27 works the exact same way. Now, when you go to number 28, sorry, I move it down so you can see those formulas still. With number 28, they say they want to have $200,000. That's the amount. And they're going to compound monthly, so we're using this left formula. So it's going to be 200,000 equals P times 1 plus, what's the rate? 5%, 0.05. 
T, how many years? 18. And they're compounding monthly, so you get 12 as that N again. But they never tell you the P. Remember, with these formulas, they can leave out any of these variables and make you solve for it. So for right now, for this scenario for 28, you have everything except for the P. So put all the numbers in. This is really just a number. How do you get the P by itself? Well, if this was 17P, you would divide by a 17. So we don't have a 17. We have this very ugly looking number, but that's okay. Divide both sides by it, and you'll get P by itself. And then you will be able to find out how much she needs to invest today so that she can get that much money. 29 is similar to that. Number 30, this should have an X here. Sorry, that is a typo. So the exponent should be 3 to the X equals 10. And solve each, write your solution in terms of a logarithm. And so what they're saying is don't approximate it. You just get your final answer. For number three, you're not going to be able to get like bases and equate the, the exponents. Can't do it for uh, B either. For C and D, what's different, you have a coefficient to that variable term, so you're going to have to divide by the three for C and divide by the 4 for D. And then each of them have that same technique. You need to convert. Remember, when you can't get like bases, then you have to pull the, pull the move we talk about, and you got to convert, and convert it to logarithmic form. So let's check and see. In C, are we going to be able to get like bases? When you divide 24 by 3, you get 8. But 8 cannot be written as a power of 4, so you got to convert. Take a look at the next one, divide 32 by 4, and you get 8 again, and it can't be written as a power of 3. So for every one of these, once you get the variable expression, and it's an exponential by itself on one side, then you got to convert to logarithms, and you're going to go back and forth. Let me go ahead and walk through B really quickly. That means it's log base 2 of parentheses. 13 equals the exponent. So let's go ahead and check that 2 raised to the 2x is equal to what's inside. I recommend that you do the little sweep through your converted function to make sure that you are right back again. This is b. And now what do you do with it? The x is by itself. Log base 2 of 13 is a number. We want to solve. When you solve, what does that mean? It means get the variable by itself. So divide both sides by 2, and that's going to give you then x is equal to log base 2 of 13 divided by, sorry, that guy is too high, divided by 2 in the denominator. Now, someone asked me recently, can you divide these out? And the answer is no. This guy is a number all by himself log base 2 of 13. And so your final answer is this entire thing. Now, if you are asked to approximate your answer, then you would need to use the change of base and use log, base thir log of 13 over log of 2. And then when you find that, divide the whole thing by 2. What's different about the next ones, taking logs on both sides, you can do that or you can use the techniques that are up here. If you take you have to divide the 2 to both sides. Remember, that exponential has got to be by itself before you do anything. On this one, because it's a base e, you would take the natural log of both sides, and then you would have to use the power rule over here. You know, it is just easier to use the big move if you can't get like bases and equate the exponents. Just convert. And when you convert, then that variable is going to pop out for you. For b, We've got this exponential with the variable. Get rid of that 3. How do you get rid of it? You undo multiplication by division. So you get 10 over 3. Convert. Log base 2 of 10 over 3 is equal to that exponent x minus 5. Next guy, same thing. Bring that 4 over. And when you do that, so we can even write that down, e to the negative point 2x is equal to 3 over 4. Is there any way that you are going to be able to rewrite that as like bases? And the answer is no. And so you need to rewrite it because it's an E. It's the natural log of the other side, which is 3 quarters, is equal to the exponent. 
then divide by negative 0.2, and you'll get x is equal to that value. So that's it. Hope you're having a great day.